Well, young kids, as young as five, are getting a lesson about transgender issues when classes at Horace Mitchell Primary School in Maine were read the book, I Am Jazz, about a child with a boy's body but a girl's brain. Parents are upset that they were not informed about the lesson. And now one mom is saying that her first grader is asking if he is, in fact, transgender. Joining us to discuss this, Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor and radio talk show host, and Dr. Susan Lipkin, psychologist and author of Preventing Hazing, How Parents, Teachers, and Coaches Can Stop the Violence, Harassment, and Humiliation. So let me start here. Tammy, is this some sort of plan or indoctrination on the part of the school to get to kids first because there was not parental permission and, and in a way that really um, promotes maybe the teacher or superintendents uh, or principals? personal opinion. Yeah, look, this has been going on for quite some time, and this we've heard it also from Hillary Clinton and It Takes a Village. This is about conditioning, and not just of the children, but of the parents as well. As a gay woman, I just want to say to everyone out there also that you can be the moral arbiter of your child. It doesn't make you a bigot. But the implication here is, is that if you're left to your own devices as a parent, something will go wrong, that they have to intervene. That, of course, has got to be rejected. I mean, there's lots of discussions about age appropriate appropriateness, but what concerns me as a gay woman, as an activist, yeah. as somebody who cares about the future, is that the messages parents are receiving are mixed, and they're told that if you also resist, if you want to retain control of your family, that you're going to be called uh, a bigot or a homophobe. And I think that it's important for every parent to know that wanting to maintain control of your family, raising your child as you see fit, is the right thing to do. And I think that besides conditioning, it's also about social social engineering and it does start very early and this is why I think it's very important for every parent to clearly be involved and to know it's okay to sure. interject and to say no. I'm glad you say that because I think it's a powerful discussion to have at some point in time but, yes. but when parents are not given the option or even the notice their backs are up against the wall and they start the conversation on defense rather than open-minded. Doctor let me ask you this are kids ready to be talking about any relationship in terms of sexuality, transgender, at the age of five? Absolutely not. Why? It is because between five and eight, they're not thinking in a conceptual way. Mm. They haven't actually, uh, they're not relating to their own sexuality, which will change often through adolescence as, and as they grow into early adulthood. And it's not what is most important for them at that point. And I don't think that kids need to know this or should be knowing this. It is completely confusing to them. And as a feminist and also as a victim uh, activist, I think that it's insane to say that somebody has a boy's body and a girl's brain. What's a girl's brain. Right, I mean, exactly. the, and the book is so full of stereotypes that we've been fighting since Great the 1950s. Point. I can't imagine why they would use it. So if they need to use it, argument against this, I agree. If they need to it's use it individually with one child who may be dealing with that at the age of eight or older, perhaps, but between five and eight and a group, the only person who people who maybe should be uh, exposed to this are adults, are the staff, and perhaps the parents, but absolutely not the children. Doctor, would you go as far as saying there's harm done in some way to a child who is exposed to this at a young age and in fact without the opportunity to have his parents involved to guide him along or her in, along. I think that the there could be harm done. I think that the issue is that children do not understand what you're talking about and it raises a kind of confusion for them. I mean there are many men who are ballerinas who are not gay and who are not transgender and right. there are girls who are great athletes and, and neither are they. Right. And what is the message we're sending? I was really, I was really offended. This is really about the projection of our issues as adults onto children. And I think we have to consider that. You know, look, at a point when I was a child, I thought I was a Cocker Spaniel. And there's a point where we have these fantasies, where we think we're Superman, where we can fly, where we're the cat. It's a great note. You know, this is childhood. Uh, and this is why this is particularly troubling, I think, as well. Yeah, particularly troubling, too, just because uh, as a mom, I would just want to know. Give me the option to know so that I can be there for my kid when they come home with questions about it and prepare myself as a parent. A great, great discussion here. Um, you know, they say no, no age is too young to start learning about this from the school, but I so appreciate your mm. perspective. Tammy Bruce and Dr. Limpkins, thank you. Thank you. Up next on the